alcoholic and an addict. I'm in long-term recovery from opiate addiction, uh, along with other chemicals. My boss asked me if I was, if I was okay. If, he asked me if I was drunk. That was at seven in the morning, and I thought, holy shit, something's wrong here. I, if he knows, I, I'm in trouble. I would drink at lunch. I would have two or three beers because I was shake, rattling, and rolling, usually from the night before. And I, you know, I needed a break, you know, I needed to put the alcohol in my system. People that are struggling on job sites a lot of times uh, are the last to know that they're, they're the problem. There was jobs that I went to and left at lunchtime and never came back and left the cranes running and just never came back to the job. And the alcohol and drugs were more important in my life at that time than paying bills. I started out with a couple of Percocet and uh, within uh, eight years, I ended up doing my first uh, prison bid. And in those eight years, I lost uh, my family, my career, uh, my children. My work uh, habits were horrible. Uh, alcoholism was just kind of taking over my whole life. And uh, you know, I was missing Fridays and Mondays, or I was coming in hungover, and I wasn't a productive member of the crew. We have the highest rate of substance abuse disorders and suicides uh, in the country. People are tired, they're sore, they're hurt, and they're just looking for a little relief. The problem in the union, you know, some people turn to drinks, some people turn to drugs. Drugs are everywhere on the job sites. I've noticed that uh, recently it's gotten worse to uh, where there's actually guys who are ODing in spotter pots and getting found on Monday morning. I was a miserable bastard. I thought I was on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, that's how far down I thought I was. I was out drinking, I, I drove onto uh, an exit ramp onto a highway and uh, had a head-on collision with a car. And uh, I spent a month in intensive care and uh, I, I just barely made it out of there. During those, the last two rehabs, I was served with divorce papers. Um, I was asked to leave my residence. I'm here to talk about uh, suicide and prevention. In 2012, I lost my 17-year-old son, Cordero, uh, to suicide. It's time to get uncomfortable, and it's time to start talking about what people don't want to talk about. Addiction, suicide prevention, and behavioral health. It's a very uncomfortable subject to talk about. We need to change that culture remove the stigma on communicating about addiction, suicide prevention, and behavioral health issues. We gotta get past that. Uh, our lives depend on it. We're here to kick off an educational uh, effort to get our local unions in the United States and Canada the resources that they need so we can progress putting peer counselors or peer support people into each and every local in the system. That's the ultimate goal. For all the locals that don't have one, uh, it's, you know, it needs to happen. There needs to be an emphasis put on it. And uh, I'm proud of my local for, for going ahead with it, for the leadership uh, wanting to or allowing the, this to happen. It's been my experience that People who admit their problems, step into rehab, step into mental health institutions, end up being heroes in the end. It takes a stronger person to walk through the door and admit their failures and their faults and their wrongs than it does to keep acting the exact same way we've been acting for years. I do think that a lot of people shy away from helping those with like um, addiction or mental health disorders because they don't understand it. It's hard to find a household in, in this country that hasn't been touched one way or another whether it, you know, it's addiction or uh, suicide, mental health issues, things like that. I went down to the union hall. They asked me if I had a problem, and that's where I admitted, yeah, I did. And, and uh, you know, they asked me if I wanted help, and it kind of all started from, from that. I needed help. Um, I, I was going uh, 
crazy. Um, my mind wouldn't stop. Uh, I had to talk to somebody, I had to talk about it. We've never truly have had anyone who didn't want the help, who didn't say that they didn't want to be helped because, you know, they already lost their kids, they've already lost their spouse, and their job's the next thing. In our trade, when you sit in a seat or go into a building to operate a power plant, you need to be on your game. We just want to be there for the members that are struggling. If, if it's gone out of control for some people, if it's gone beyond where they can help themselves, we, we are a family. These are our brothers and sisters. We say that all the time. We would not be here if we had not reached out for help. Well, a business manager we had at the time could see how I was struggling. At, at work and on the job site, I would, I would take extra risks, I guess you would say, you know, because it just didn't matter. You gotta want it. You gotta actually want to get better, as hard as that sounds. You have to have hit your rock bottom and have absolutely had enough of the way you've been living. I just hope if one person identifies with me and decides I can't do this anymore. I need to get sober. I need to find a way out. We should be having conversations every day on the job site, making people aware of the issues, making people aware of the community of people that are out there that's ready to help them at a moment's notice. We've had people have had to go through five to ten times of treatment, but we haven't given up on them. You have to choose whether you want to live or die. And for me, I didn't want to die. I wanted to live, and I wanted to live a productive, clean life. There's a better way, and there's people that care and that are there to help you. And I want to be that person to help others now. The most powerful words that a peer person can say to another worker is, hey, how you doing? You okay? Talk to somebody that you, you feel that you can trust. You know, somebody that, uh, conducts themselves, you know, in, in a good manner. If you're feeling down or you want to talk to somebody, you know, reach out to your brother engineer. You know, reach out to somebody on the job that's in recovery because there is somebody in recovery on every job. Having that member, having that peer, having that brother that you can call and you can talk to is going to be huge because you might not be ready to make that step, you know, but you're, you're reaching out to a friend. We have members that are away from home for months on end and things happen at home and they're not able to be there. It causes a lot of mental strain and, and depression in our members and we need to be there to help them. They're great workers, you know, they wouldn't be an operating engineer if they weren't, you know, they're, they're top of the line. So these contractors don't want to lose them. The help and the assistance that I received from my union, no doubt, saved my life. They saw something in me at the time that I didn't see in myself and uh, I'm forever grateful for that. And I believe every local needs to have a program like this or at least look into starting one or reach out to other locals or the international and, and have the ability for your members to reach out. You just kind of ignore it and kick it under the table. It's not going to go anywhere and that person's just going to get farther and farther into their addiction, you know. No, I would say no one's beyond saving. Ask them if they need help. Ask them if they're thinking about hurting themselves. It's, those are all steps to show somebody you care and that there is somebody there to help. Ask friends, ask family, ask your union. Everything is at your fingertips if you know where to look. That's the most important part that I would like to people to know. There's a lot of resources out there. I think our, our international is putting those out and I, I just hope everybody is taking advantage of those resources that are there because they're not alone. We can always find an answer. The network of people out, that are out there from coast to coast, um, it's just incredible. When it's a brother or sister in your union, it, it makes you know that somebody has your back. Uh -huh.